Today I'm going to show you how to design 3D printed tool holders in Fusion 360. We'll go through each step of designing this caliper holder, and you can use this process to make a holder for any tool. Alright, let's get started. The first thing you'll want to do is take a reference photo of your tool on a flat surface. Place a ruler next to your tool so you can scale the picture in Fusion. If you do this with an iPhone like I did, the image might be saved as an HEIF file, which you cannot import into Fusion. To get around this, I just opened the photo with Microsoft Paint and then saved it as a JPEG. Then we're going to insert this as a canvas in Fusion. So I'll go to Insert, Canvas, select my JPEG, and insert it on the XY plane, and click OK. Now that our canvas is in Fusion, we have to scale it to make sure it's the right size. I made a whole video about taking good reference photos and using them in Fusion, and since making that video, I learned about a much faster way to scale canvases. After inserting the canvas, find it in the browser, right-click, and click Calibrate. Then, all you need to do is click on two points that are a known distance apart in your photo. So for me, I'll click on the 6-inch mark on the ruler, and then on the 0 mark in the ruler. Then all I have to do is type in 6, hit enter, and now my canvas is the proper size. And if I want to check that, I can make a new sketch, draw a line from 0 to 1 inch, and it is in fact 6 inches. Now we're ready to trace the caliper. I don't have to trace everything, and it doesn't have to be perfect. I only have to capture the parts that will be supported by the tool holder. So I'll go around the whole canvas and trace the important parts. I drew my sketch with a lot of overlapping lines, so I'm using the trim tool to make it one closed shape. Notice that the area inside our outline is shaded blue. That means that this is a closed curve, which is good. That's what we want. Now we can double click the outline to select the whole thing, click offset, and offset this curve outwards by 0.15 inches, and that's going to give us some thickness that we can extrude. So I'll click on the area inside those two curves, right click, and click extrude. And I'm going to bring this into 3D by 0.25 inches. So now we have to take a moment and think about how our tool holder is going to work. I want to slot my calipers into the holder from the top, and that means I need to get rid of this whole top section. And the way I'm going to do that is with a construction plane. So I'll click on the Construct dropdown and create a plane through two edges. So basically, I want to delete everything north of this line here. So I'm going to create a plane that goes through this edge and this edge. I'll click OK, and now I can use the Split Body tool to split this shape along this construction plane. So I'll click on the plane as my cutting tool, click OK, and now I can go into the browser, find that top body, right click, and remove it. So if I zoom in here, I'll notice that it didn't make a perfect cut, so I'm actually going to repeat this process to get rid of this little extra area. So I'll turn off that first construction plane. I'm going to make a new plane through two edges. The first edge is here. The second one is this interior corner. Click OK. And now I'll do the same thing. Split body. This is my body. This is the splitting tool. Click OK. And then find the body that I don't want and remove it. In the process of doing that, I split this a little more than I wanted to. So what I'll use now is the Combine tool to make these two bodies one. So here are my two bodies. The operation is Join. Click OK. And now everything is one. For this tool holder to work, I also need to get rid of this whole bottom section. That way this long arm can freely hang down. So I can orbit to this face, select it, right click and select extrude and I can pull this north. So I'll bring it up here but look what happens when I click OK. 
I have this sliver left. And the reason that's there is because when I traced my calipers, not everything is perfectly horizontal and vertical. So this plane is not perpendicular to that line. And that's okay, we can work around that. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z to undo and create a new sketch on this face. I'll just create a big rectangle that encompasses this entire face easily. And now it's a lot easier to select everything that I need to extrude. So I'll right click, extrude. I'm gonna go to the top so that I can see what I'm doing. And I'll bring it, eh, let's say 1.2 inches. That will provide enough material for a solid tool holder. Now I can click okay, and there we go. I don't have this whole bottom section. For the calipers to slot easily into the holder, I need to add a bit of a tolerance, and this is a great time to use user parameters. So I'm going to click on the Modify dropdown and click on Change Parameters. I'll click the plus under User Parameters and create a parameter called Tolerance. And through experimentation, I know that 0.02 inches is a good tolerance for this. So I'll click on OK, click on OK again, and now I can select the faces where I need to add this tolerance. And that's going to be all the faces that will touch the calipers. So I'm going to hold shift as I select the faces so I can select multiple. And now I can right click and click press pull. Because we created that parameter, instead of typing a number in distance, I can just type in tolerance. I actually need to type in negative tolerance so that it presses the correct way. And you can see that that created space between the calipers and the holder. The reason I used a parameter here is if I ever decide that this tolerance is too much or too little, I can go back into the change parameters menu and just adjust this value. Let's say I wanted a bigger tolerance. I wanted 0.05 inches. I can change that value, hit enter, and notice that this distance changed instantly. There are lots of situations where parameters are super handy, and we'll use them a little bit more later on in this design. So I'll change it back to 0.02, hit enter, and hit OK. Now we need to add something so that the calipers don't fall out the front of the holder. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the top of this rail. I'm going to create a lip by offsetting these curves, but currently there are actually no curves in this sketch. So I need to project these items onto this plane. So I'm going to hit P for project, select this whole shape by clicking on the inside, and hit OK. And I'll repeat that process for this curve. Hit P for project, click inside this shape, click OK, and now these purple lines are all projected up from this solid body. And what that means is if I ever go back in my timeline and edit this body, those purple lines will move to reflect that. I'll double click this curve and then offset it outwards by 0.1 inches. And I'll repeat this process on the right shape. I only really need a small lip on either side to keep the calipers in the holder. So I'll draw some more lines to bound the next extrusion. So now I'll click only the areas that I need and I'm holding down shift so I can select multiple areas. I'll right click, click extrude, and I'll extrude this by 0.05 inches. I have join selected under the operation and that's correct. We want these to become one body and now I can click okay. So there we go. The tool holder is coming to life. We need a plate to join these pieces together and provide us a surface to screw into the wall. So I'm going to go into my sketches on the browser and turn on that first sketch that we made. And to make the selection a little bit easier, I'm going to turn off the bodies. Now I can just click inside both of these shapes and I'm holding shift while I do that so I can select multiple, right click and click extrude. And I'll turn the bodies back on and I'm going to extrude this by 0.17 inches. It's going the wrong way, so I'll just put a negative in front of that, and that will create our back plate. Join is turned on, which is what we want, 
and now this is all one object. I'll turn the canvas and the sketch back off just so everything's a little easier to see. Our tool holder is almost done. The only thing we have left to do is add some mounting holes. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the plate. And before I create the mounting holes, I need to add two more parameters. So I went ahead and measured my screws with my calipers, and I found out that the diameter of the screw head is 0.3 inches. So I'm going to create a new parameter called screw head diameter. And I'm actually going to make this parameter 0.31 inches. And that's going to be the countersink diameter. And adding that 0.01 inch will add a little bit of tolerance so that the screw fits easier. We'll add another parameter. And this one is going to be the thickness of the screw head. That will translate to the depth of our countersink. I measured that to be 0.1 inch, but we'll enter that as 0.12 to again give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. And finally, I'm going to add screw diameter. That will be 0.15 inches, which again is a little bit bigger than the actual diameter of the screw. Click OK and click OK again. I'll hit the C key for circle and then click on the first point where I want a mounting hole. And for the diameter, we'll type screw diameter. Now we can hit C for circle again, click on that center point, and type in screw head diameter. We don't have to type the whole thing as soon as we start typing fusion autofills, and we can just use the arrow keys to scroll down to screw head diameter, hit enter, hit enter again, and there we go. So that's our first mounting hole, and I'll repeat that process to make the second one. I think I want that hole right about here. Things are getting a little difficult to select, so I'm going to turn off that first sketch, and now I'll click inside my two holes while holding Shift. Right click, extrude, and I'll extrude those through the other side. I'll turn that sketch back on, click inside my countersink holes, right click, click extrude, and I'll extrude that down by screw head thickness. And I need to add a negative in front of that. And there we go. You might have wondered why I made the thickness of this exactly 0.17 inches. The reason I did that is so when I made my countersinks, I still have material on the other side to form a strong piece. Since the screw head thickness is 0.12 inches and the thickness of this whole piece is 0.17, that means that I still have 0.05 inches right here. And through experienced 3D printing, I know that will be sufficient for a good strong screw mount. And the only thing left to do is 3D print the holster. So I'll click File, 3D Print, click on my body, click OK. I have Fusion set up so that this automatically opens Prusa Slicer. And when I slice, I'm making sure that I have supports everywhere selected. That's because we have these lips here and they can't print in midair. Everything looks good so we can go over to the 3D printer. I hope you found this video useful, and I hope it inspires you to design 3D printed tool holders for your favorite tools. Let me know in the comments what other Fusion 360 tutorials or techniques you'd like to see in future videos.